world's at a tipping point where only the fit will survive. There is nowhere for me to be me. The change is now. The idea originated about six, yeah, about six years ago. Uh, my son was three, and uh, me and him were playing Ninja Turtles. He was dressed up as a Ninja Turtle, and we were just sort of fighting with spatulas and you know kitchen equipment. Um, and then at the end of that, I was sort of wanted to create like a Aboriginal superhero um, that he could connect to. Um, you know, he loves his pop culture and, you know, and I want to keep, you know, teaching him more about his own culture. So I wanted to combine the two um, so he could, you know, be in the backyard and, you know, reenacting a clever man or, or, or the, the, the creatures or whatever we, we create. Um, and just to give him the strength to own who he is personally. It was originally a kid's show. Um, I pitched it to Goldboast Pictures as a, a, a kid's show called Dreamtime Detectives. And uh, the more that we sort of delved into the dreaming stories, the more that uh, we realised that we had to age it up. Because um, a lot of the dreaming stories are quite brutal and you can't really put them in a kid's world. Um, so it, 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 was, it slowly got aged up and aged up until we reached the, the, the adult market. And that's where it really fit. and. It's where we could take the politics into a whole new level. Um, I think the, the the world for me was it's huge. It's, it's, it's a huge world, and, and um, you're dealing with a culture that's massive as well. So I think if you try and cram it into a, a two-hour film, um, you sort of miss a whole lot. Um, where it, once you put it into a, a television and environment, and, and if you know, fingers crossed, it becomes popular, you can extend on that world and and really push the boundaries I think and television sort of reached that point I think we're kind of in the golden age of television right now where you know people are accessing it so much more and, and stories are being pushed to different levels and we really wanted to push our story. For me it's entering those those elements allows you to um, throw a blanket over all your political statements that you want to um, you you allow the audience to sort of accept things a lot easier, you know, because they're already going in with the, the concept, the idea of that this is, you know, a genre of, you know, sci-fi or magical elements. When um, you, you lace some of that with, with uh, political issues, they kind of don't realise that they're being taught something at the same time. You know, we, we didn't want to create a show that was purely a black and white issue, um, and that's where the, you know, our creatures sort of played a major role um, is we could hide a lot of that and allow our audience to choose what political issue they want to follow throughout our story. The first question I got asked when we were doing this is are we going to create a language for the Harrys and I was like no absolutely not. I think for us here's an opportunity to put our language on on screen, on, on, a, on a bigger scale, you know, we have people out there speaking Elvish and Klingon fluently, and they're made up languages, um, and we have our languages dying in this country. So if we can put it in there and, and, and we make a show that's universal and people want to learn more about it, they have to go to, you know, reach out to the community, the community has to create a Bible, you know, it helps keep the language alive, and, and that was major, a major part for us. Um, I, I guess for me, it, it's I, I'd say it's the same timeline. I think um, you know a lot of the stories that you hear from from community, or, or you know, I remember an elder once, you know, talking about a, a street that had you know a, you know KFC, it had a Woolies, all these big you know shopping complexes, and he's saying you know this is this is you know traditional sacred land. It's like it doesn't matter what you put on top of it, it's still there, and I think. Um, our world is very much like that, you know. The, the hairy creatures, you know, um, in our world are you know, said to be here longer, you know, longer than 60,000 years, you know, um, and they're only just making themselves shown. So I think what, what excites me is that we, you know, we have the potential to cre create quite a big universe around the, the Clever Man world 
that we've, we've created and, and still keep it quite similar to the world we live in. It's meant to be just quite urban. I think, you know, we didn't want to show Australia that is stereotypical. We didn't want to show the Red Desert. We didn't want to show the Golden Beaches. You know, like, it, it, we didn't want to show the, the Opera House or the Sydney Harbour Bridge. It, 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 was, it was a world that we wanted to, to make ours, you know, and that, was, and that was through the whole process. It was, we always wanted to look at how we're making this new, you know. Um, the cast, you know, our cast, are, uh, uh, they're all skilled, but some of them haven't had as much screen time on television as others, and giving them that, that shot made it different as well, you know. So it was constantly looking at elements like that that just made it new and different.